Has Dearborn, Michigan become a de facto no-go zone in America where Sharia blasphemy laws against Christian proselytizing must be followed? Is a place where Muslim violence and intimidation replaces tolerance and pluralism? Watch this United West investigation and you be the judge. phase of the trial, despite the video evidence of the assault, Mohammed Bazi pled not guilty, demanding a jury trial. One year later, a jury found Mohammed Bazi guilty of assault. Defendant number one, Ali Hazima, pled guilty to assault and battery, was charged with a $300 fine and given a slap on the wrist. Defendant number two, 36-year-old Mohammed Bazi's court records show that in 1995, he had an assault and battery conviction, 2002 domestic violence conviction, six vehicle related convictions, a drug paraphernalia conviction, and in 2012 a window peeping conviction. Now the sentencing for the 2011 assault you just saw. During the sentencing phase of the trial, Bazi's prior window peeping conviction was addressed by Judge Summers. This deviant sexual behavior, known as window peeping or being a peeping tom, is considered a gateway crime, an act that leads sexual offenders down an escalating crime path. The allegations were that Mr. Bazzi was looking in the windows of a number of different addresses. For a good laugh, pay close attention to what Judge Summers said police found in Mohammed Bazi's pants pockets. Lotion in one pocket, a lot of toilet paper in the other pocket, and peeping in windows that are not associated with you gives the court a pretty fair idea of what's going on, Mr. Bassey. I understand what the plea is. Fine is five hundred dollars, that's the maximum court cost, one hundred dollars probation goes along with the other cases. Mohammed Bazi was found guilty of assault by a jury of his peers. Judge Summers hands down his sentencing. It's a $500 fine, $100, excuse me, $200 court costs. Probation is 24 months reporting as directed. 
the oversight fee is a standard $25 per month. In this case, it's four days jail. This can be served on weekends for their 48 hour time periods. Probation, as I indicated, is 24 months reporting this directive. It's an additional three days on the alternative workforce program at a cost of $20 per day. Again, Wayne County Sheriff Deputy Turfey refused to investigate at the 2011 Arab Festival. Captain Pradell and Deputy Chief Richardson refused to investigate the assault and battery for over 30 days, possibly covering for Bazi and Hazima. In frustration with Wayne County Sheriff's Department's endless deception and inaction, I sent Corporal James Isaac of the Dearborn Police Department the video of the attack. Corporal Isaacs identified Bazi and Hazima within 48 hours and had warrants issued immediately thereafter. I pursued this case for over a year because the Wayne County Sheriff's Department and City of Dearborn are corrupted by not defending the First Amendment rights of non-Muslims. There's a long train of abuses going back to 2009, making Dearborn, Michigan the first emerging no-go zone in the United States. Dearborn, Michigan again, and just to give some background and context here, this is the center of the Islamic community in, in all of North America, one of the largest Muslim diasporas in the entire world. Uh, a Muslim has been charged with attempted murder for trying to run down a, a Christian protester. Frankly, I'm not surprised. Tom Trento is president of the United West, an organization that monitors Islamic extremism. So welcome back to the show. Now, I, I'm not surprised this happened. I'm rather surprised that anyone's actually been charged. And Michael, it's amazing what's going on in Dearborn, Michigan, which is the new no-go zone for Sharia-compliant Islam. No Americans allowed in Dearborn unless you follow their rules. Crazy stuff developing, and we got a lot of information for you today. Yeah, let's have it. <laughs> well, um, uh, on June 15th of this year, uh, people have seen the, the American Muslim Stoning Christians video that we yeah. put out. And I, I think it's over a million hits, and uh, you, we are inundated with anger from America, from around the world. Michael, every single country, 200 countries, somebody in every single country has watched that video. That was June 15th. It was filmed 2012. On June 17th, Father's Day, at the Islamic Center of America in Dearborn, the largest mosque in the country, on Ford Road, that same small group of, of Christian missionaries, uh, street preachers, provocateurs, if you will, went to the mosque on Sunday, Father's Day, to preach a, uh, a Father's Day sermon. They were standing outside. People came out of the mosque yelling and screaming at them. And they were on public property, but they weren't in the Wayne County area of ju jurisdiction. They were in the uh, Dearborn Police Department jurisdiction. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, a, a uh, Muslim by the name of Mohammed, no less, uh, jumps in an SUV, comes flying over the grass, over the hill, over the curb, directly at nine of the Christians assemble with that Reuben Israel gentleman in the middle. Yeah. And uh, they had to literally jump away. They were missed by inches. Thank God the police were watching all of this. They have it on uh, their, their video cams. They cornered uh, the Mohammed in the SUV, threw him against the car, uh, security people came out from the, the mosque, the Islamic Center of, Deer, of America at Dearborn, started yelling at the police. The police almost arrested them. They arrested this individual, charged him with nine counts of attempted murder, put him in jail. He got bonded out immediately, a big-time lawyer. And guess what? Not a peep, not a peep out of any of the mainstream media on the attempted murder of nine people in Dearborn, Michigan on June 17th. Now, you know, Tom, at, now that does not surprise me at all. We, we know particularly within Michigan, Detroit in particular, the media has been terrified of saying anything. But what surprises me, and I'm relieved, the police actually pressed charges. I'm not sure if we have the video that we can play, but we showed it in its entirety just the other day of, of what you mentioned of Christians being stoned, of being attacked. I mean, there, there were blood. 
leaking from them. And then they were hemorrhaging, for goodness sake, after being attacked by a Muslim mob. You had little girls in hijabs saying, F you and F you and F you, and the, the most filthy language. And the police, if anything, protected the Muslims and refused to, to give any sort of protection in any way, moral or physical, to the Christians who were merely there peacefully saying, this is our point of view. Yeah, and, uh, and you're 100% you're right, but there's a very important distinction for your viewers that's, that's critical. We have two law enforcement jurisdictions in play in Dearborn. One is the sheriff that handles the county, Wayne County, right. and the other is the police department of Dearborn. Dearborn police performed admirably. They weren't involved on the 15th at the Arab Fest, June 15th. The sheriff's department, they're the ones who dropped the ball, and I'm sure there's going to be a lawsuit. But on the 17th, it was the jurisdiction of the Dearborn police, and all of our reports, and, and we have some good sources, that's a large mosque. We, uh, we develop sources even within mosques, by the way, Michael. And um, the, the PD, the police department, uh, deserves uh, a credit for mm. doing the right thing. And they were, they were there to protect these uh, preachers. So they're the good guys. The Wayne County Sheriff people are, are the bad people in this situation. This is really interesting to hear because I, you know, I was down in Dearborn, uh, at a conference with Pam Geller and Robert Spence and various other people, uh, we had a man who, who'd been a slave in Sudan, a, a black Christian who'd been a, a little boy, a slave in a Muslim family. I mean, people who doubt these stories, please do your research, do your reading. Now, we did, there, there were police protecting us there because there, there were people outside who wanted to get at us, if, if you like. I know this is very difficult for, for North Americans, Canadians in particular, to embrace because they want to think the best, as I do. But there is this gaping double standard now where a Muslim can, can break a law, uh, can attack someone, and it will be covered up, explained, justified. If a Christian even talks about his faith or even opposing Sharia from a non-Christian point of view, Pam Geller is not, not, not a Christian, immediately they're attacked and that becomes a new story. Yeah, that's right. You were at uh, Pam Geller's event, Pamela Geller's event in Dearborn, and, and I saw a video on the, on the clashes there. But it all goes back to Sharia, the Sharia, the path, Islamic jurisprudence. In their doctrinal book called Reliance of the Traveler, uh, if you look up the section on slander, slander means saying anything, you got this, Michael? This is a new concept in the West. Slander means saying anything that upsets Muslims. If you up that the emotional or psychological stability of a Muslim, you have committed slander, and go look at the penalty for slander. You see, there's a, a new dynamic in play, and it all goes back to Muslims are absolutely convinced of the superiority of their culture, Islam, but they're obsessed with their inferiority of convincing anybody else about the superiority of their culture. Mm -hmm. Islam's a disaster. Where it takes place is a disaster. There's good Muslims within Islam that they're trying to get out of it, and folks like myself and others and you are trying to stand by that, but Dearborn is a red line event, a historic event in the West. The, the, the jihad, the physical jihad has come to America. Okay, just before we go, one technical point. Attempted murder of nine people, he's out now. Uh, you, you always take into account the risk of flight. There's a very good chance, in fact, it, it, it has to be, that this man has connections in other parts of the world. He may well have a second passport. He may have, have dual citizenship. I would have thought he's not the sort of person, and he's very likely to repeat the offence, if, if angered. I would have thought he's not the sort of person who should be released on bond or in any other way. Not only should he not have been released on bond or have a gigantic bond, but this guy needs to be watched because he is de facto a flight risk. And where is President Obama on this? When in when Harvard, when a cop knocks on a door, the president's having uh, beer parties and trying to bring everybody together. Nine American citizens in Dearborn were almost killed by a Muslim. Where's the president speaking out? Where's his anger, his righteous indignation? He's silent and he's mm. complicit and he's collaborating with the Brotherhood on this. This is horrible. We'll have you back on the show, sir. I, I promise you and I promise the viewers that we'll have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Have a great day. This United West investigation makes it very clear. In conclusion, Dearborn, Michigan is America's first Sharia-compliant city where non-Muslims may have lost their freedom of speech.